So your teenage child has been diagnosed with functional neurological disorder, short for FND, and as a dedicated parent, you would do just about anything to help your child, including following doctor's orders. Whoever gave your child a diagnosis of FND that includes non-epileptic seizures, functional paralysis, movement disorder, whatever you want to call it under the umbrella of FND. And today's topic is really about FND and medication. So let's dive in. Hey, for those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Lee. I'm a pediatric health psychologist and teen FND specialist. So today's video is about medication and FND. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. There is no single medication that cures FND. I don't care what kind of symptoms your child has. There is not a single medicine that cures your child's FND. I hate to burst the bubbles, but that is the reality, at least for now. And at the time of this recording, which is at the end of June of 2024. So if you happen to watch this video 10 years from now, maybe, and highly likely the information I'm about to provide you is probably obsolete. But as of now, let's stick to what is the latest and greatest. And just like any other videos, there are so many people who don't even know what FND is. So I'm just going to just spell out for you. Functional neurological disorder, short for FND, is an umbrella term to describe this cross-wired problems between a brain and a body, even though your child's body and brain are physiologically and structurally quote unquote a-okay. It is a real diagnosis and your child's not making things up. And it is not just one thing that is causing the problem of FND. It is a biopsychosocial phenomenon. Again, I don't really care what you want to believe. This is what it is. The FND is a biopsychosocial phenomenon. So it's not just anxiety or it's not just stress. It's not just this one trauma that many doctors are insisting that your child may or may not be having. It is a biological, psychological, and social phenomenon. So that being said, why? Why doctors are even prescribing medications for your child's FND? Well, I have reasons for it along with a research article. So here's the deal. Doctors are trained as an expert to treat symptoms, not the conditions, unless there is a direct cure or medication or some sort of medical procedures for that particular condition. So when it comes to FND, we're just focusing on symptoms, whether it's a functional seizures or a paralysis or dissociation or brain fog or whatever you want to call it under the umbrella of FND, the doctors are trained to treat the symptoms if there is no cure for that particular condition or diagnosis. And this is not doctor's fault, but this is just a medical system, specifically a conventional medical system is relying heavily on one of two options as a treatment. One is medication. Number two is some sort of procedures, whether it's a surgery or whatever, whatever it is, it's either medications or procedures. That's it. Those are highly, highly recommended standard treatment within the conventional medical model. So as long as you're kind of stuck in that medical model orbit, then it's either medication or procedures. Well, I also have to say one other option is, well, there's nothing we can do. So there's no cure. Um, you've got this diagnosis and you kind of have to live with it. That's pretty much it. That's why these doctors do prescribe medications when it comes to FND. Once again, treating the symptoms, not the condition itself. And what else do they know? Right? So what kind of medications are out there that are typically used for FND? Well, I can tell you there are a few, so I'm just going to kind of go by categories, so to speak. One of the common ones are antidepressant. So that would be considered SSRI or SNRI or tricyclic. So the medications would be something like um, fluoxetine or Prozac for brand name, uh, sertraline or Zoloft for brand name, um, or amitriptyline. Those are the kind of typical names that are thrown out there that are part of antidepressants given to teens who are struggling with FND. Sometimes it can be Lexapro, sometimes it can be 
citalopram, I mean, something else, right? But those are typically the antidepressant class or category that doctors do prescribe. And then second category is antipsychotic medications. So these are olanzapine, aripiprazole, brandon probilify, um, or risperidone, or quetiapine, and those are the sort of generic names of different drugs that are in that category of antipsychotic medications. And speaking of antipsychotic medications, there's actually an article that came out last year. Mind you, this is all about adult FND, so this is not pediatric specific, but they actually compared what kind of treatments are out there for FND, mind you, for adults, because peas are sort of like in the shadow. And this is part of the reasons why I am all about teen FND, because you guys out there, parents and teens, you are in no man's land. And it is my mission to change that scenario, because teen FND is not the same thing as adult FND. But anyway, going back to this article, uh, they looked at what's out there, what kind of medications are being prescribed, and one of the medications, haloperidol, it is kind of old uh, first generation antipsychotic drugs, but um, that drug was particularly helpful or more effective than relaxants like a benzodiazepine, something called midazolam. But anyway, so this particular antipsychotic medication was supposed to be more effective compared to the other kind of medication. However, the other type of antipsychotic medication, quetiapine, that was supposed to be less side effects compared to other drugs. But get this, of all these medications, forget what kind or dosage or how often, when they compared the medications as a total versus psychotherapy or non-medical approach, psychotherapy was far more effective when it comes to treating FND. Well, I'm like, well, I knew that, you know, but now there's evidence for it. Okay, so back to the medications. There are some anti-seizure medications or anti-epileptic medications that are given, regularly speaking, things like a topiramate, lamotrigine, and things like that. And then other relaxing medications, things like a benzodiazepine, which is highly addictive. But anyway, so that and gabapentin, propranolol, those are the typical kind of medications that are floating around that are commonly more or less given to quote unquote treat symptoms of FND, depending on what else is going on. Now, there are probably 200 other different kinds of medications that are thrown out there, but those are largely speaking category-wise antidepressant, antipsychotic, anti-seizures, and other kind of relaxing medications. Those are the typical names that I do hear that many, many families are either being prescribed or recommended for their children. Now, what's wrong with taking these medications? Well, there are several. Number one, like I mentioned, there is no single medication that targets the actual condition of FND itself rather than symptoms, right? So obviously the medication is not the solution because it is not targeting the root cause directly. So it is just a band-aid, you know, approach, temporary approach instead of the cure, so to speak. That's why in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that there is no one single medication that cures FND. And then with taking medications, as long as the medication is somewhat therapeutic, sometimes it doesn't have to be therapeutic, there is always a chance of having unwanted negative side effects. And that's is why many parents are concerned about the teen's overall health with unnecessary medications because of this potential unwanted or unneeded negative side effects. And there is also this stigma, you know, why is my child taking this like antidepressant medications even though my child is not even depressed, right? Or my child is depressed or anxious because of this FND and why is my child needing to take this antidepressant without hitting the direct target of the FND itself, right? So there are a lot of questions and concerns amongst parents, rightfully so, with taking medications or using the medications as almost the only treatment or one of the major treatment options. And I'm not saying like, oh my gosh, you need to quit taking medications right away. 
Obviously, you have to talk to whoever prescribed your child that particular medication related to the FND. Like why? You know, where is the evidence that it actually works for the FND? And talk to the doctor about your concerns. You know, we're concerned about these negative side effects potentially. And we're also concerned about, well, there is not much medical negative side effects but there's not much of the positive effect either. So why are we even doing this, right? So make sure you do have the right to ask those questions and then bring it to the table. And lastly, but not the least, obviously, the teens might identify themselves with this, oh, I'm the sick kid. You know, I'm that kind of sick kid as long as they do take these kinds of quote-unquote not the solution medications for their FND conditions. And so what's wrong with teens starting to identify themselves with this sick kids label, so to speak? Well, there's whole kinds of implications to it. One of the most difficult ones to swallow as a parent is that as soon as a teen is identifying themselves with that, oh, I'm that kind of sick kid that I'm going to have to take this medication because I have this permanent condition, then guess what? It's going to be extremely difficult to actually resolve FND for that teen down the road in the future. Because once they sort of super glue themselves with this identity of I am a sick kid, I'm going to have to live like this for the rest of my life. Then what comes after that as an invisible script is there's nothing I can do. This is going to be who I am. Therefore, there's nothing I can do. And that sort of victim mentality is one of the biggest obstacles for the teens to get better from FND. So what can you do? What exactly can you do? Well, number one, making sure your child's diagnosis of FND is correct to begin with. Sometimes it, that means you have to go see another provider, most likely neurologist for the second, third opinions. I'm not saying that you have to continue to go see 10,000 more neurologists for just to get the same reassurance. No, that's not what I'm saying. However, are you as a parent and also your child sort of accepting the diagnosis as it is, as an FND, your child might have something else other than FND that is very possible. However, are you at least knowing that this is a diagnosis your child has? And once you get that correct diagnosis, then the next step is you need to know what FND is. It's almost like you are in the house and there's a fire and if you don't know that there is a fire, then you don't really know what to do with it. Like if you know there's a fire, then okay, there's a fire. It's not safe to be in here. I need to get out and then put out the fire, right? So then once you know what it is, it helps you to think about who you need to get the help from and what you need to do. But without knowing what it is, there's not much else you can do. So educate yourself and then your teen also needs to know what it is. And for today's video, there is no single medication that cures FND, at least at the time of this recording. And lastly, again, but not the very least, once you get the diagnosis and you sort of get your fundamental education of FND, then you got to find a specialist. Once again, FND is a, such a special condition and it's not like run in a mill I feel blue so I just need to see a talk therapist you know kind of thing FND is again biopsychosocial phenomenon therefore you need to work with a specialist just like I use an example of if your child has a cavity you got to go find a dentist or orthodontist not a neurosurgeon you know so again special problem a special provider speaking of Feel free to leave a comment below what kind of medications that your doctor has told to take for your child when it comes to your child's FND. And if you like to have this conversation in a private group with like-minded parents like you who are dedicated, then I actually created a Facebook group recently and the link is down below. It is completely free and it is a closed private group so we can chat more about it and then support each other. And if you have seen 
all of my videos and then you know your child has been diagnosed with FND and then you know that you're struggling because you cannot find a specialist for your child, then it might be time to consider joining the program that I have, Teen FND Academy. Feel free to click the link down below and then schedule a call today. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.